China is embarking on a new journey for the year 2021 as it looks to build what it calls a modern socialist country by the year 2049. It also marks the launch of the 14th five-year plan. A lot of terminology is used in China. But in fact, it is really about China's social economic blueprint for the next half decade. Over the past several months, terms like domestic consumption and crucial dual circulation are the economic buzzwords. But how to achieve that? On the sidelines of China's annual political season, I picked the brains from Bai Chongwen, a CPPCC member and dean of the School of Economics and Management with Tsinghua University. Let me ask you, Professor right. Bai, China has been talking about to encourage consumption and the consumption market. The question is how? Um, I think uh, one of the most important drivers of consumption is uh, uh, household disposable income. And uh, um, in the uh, last 10 years, uh, we have had some improvement in household in disposable income, actually quite a bit of improvement there. However, the share of household disposable income in GDP has uh, stopped growing for a few years. So we need to restart the growth process there. So in the government report, uh, the government proposes that, uh, uh, especially for big cities, uh, we need to uh, increase the supply of uh, uh, subsidized housing, uh, either rental or uh, housing, uh, subsidized housing for sales. Uh, if we can do that, if we can achieve that, then uh, that would effectively reduce the burden of housing on households, especially on young households that will free up purchasing power for other products and services. The other uh, factor is that uh, people need uh, to feel secure to spend if they are uh, very concerned about uh, future medical expenses or their uh, retirement uh, uh, expenses, then they, uh, they, they, they don't feel comfortable uh, spending. They need to save for these uh, future expenditure. So the improvement of uh, uh, social safety net, uh, of social insurances is still uh, very important. Professor Bai, if I could be blunt here, all the things you talk about have been uh, being uh, put into some of the priority list of work uh, in the government over the past years, uh, and yet uh, it have not been resolved. Housing is one of those examples. Uh, do you see there is going to be some quick solutions for that? Right, that's a, a very good question. Uh, the ideas have been there. The uh, key is the implementation. And uh, uh, for uh, housing, one important factor is that uh, whether local governments have the incentives to provide uh, affordable uh, housing to, uh, to local residents. For example, if uh, uh, the uh, local government builds um, uh, subsidized uh, rental housing, then these housing can generate uh, rental income in the future. So uh, it's uh, possible to, uh, to use uh, asset-backed security uh, to raise funds uh, uh, mm. to, uh, the, to finance the construction of the uh, housing. So uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, um, something that has not been done but uh, uh, the development of the capital market uh, has made it easier to do this. I understand about the priority, Professor Bai, but uh, there are other yes. priorities. For example, uh, the reason why uh, Mr. Guo Shuqing has been warning from the PBOC about the bubbles in the housing market a few days ago is because right. the world was in a sluggish economic mode and China has to boost its economy despite all the difficulties. So stimulus package being put in there, and there is a tendency once their stimulus package will go to you know the real estate sector uh, eventually. Uh, that has been the way for some time. Uh, now uh, there are 
top priorities like that from time to time. So how, how confident are you that this uh, affordable housing thing will be put as the priority while China is also struggling with many other priorities? Um, I, I think uh, in the past, uh, the local governments uh, uh, felt the pressure to achieve certain growth targets. I, I think uh, what has been changing is that uh, we are now emphasizing um, high quality growth more. Uh, for example, uh, in the uh, 14 five year plan, um, we probably uh, won't uh, set a, a five year growth target. And uh, uh, earlier there were talks about uh, a growth target uh, to, uh, from now to uh, 2035. Um, uh, again, there uh, probably we won't set a specific growth target. And uh, this uh, signals a, a change in uh, priority. Uh, that is, uh, we are uh, not going to uh, single-mindedly uh, work at trying to achieve a certain growth target. Rather, uh, we try to uh, mm. improve the quality of economic development. Mm. So you think, Professor Bai, if I get it right, priority, the issue of priority is extremely important in China's uh, uh, decision-making process and also in right. guaranteeing whether one thing will be done well at all. And you think this time right. it will be the priority. Is that right? Um, uh, it will be one of the priorities. The development of the domestic uh, market is um, uh, one of the top priorities. And uh, for, for domestic demands, there are two components, uh, consumption and investment. And uh, um, we, we will keep uh, investing and uh, um, now the emphasis is on um, having a more innovative, uh, more investment that stimulates, uh, stimulates innovation. So that's uh, a, another uh, mm. priority. During the government work report, one would notice that the Chinese premier are talking once and again about nurturing the middle class. Now, uh, that has not been uh, very much uh, uh, the way that the government puts it earlier, but this time it did. Uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon, at least to journalists like me. What's your take? I, I think uh, emphasizing uh, the building up of the uh, middle class is uh, there are uh, ways to achieve that because uh, the economy is growing and right. uh, um, it's expected it. that uh, more people more people's income will uh, get into that range. And uh, I think a another uh, reason is also the desire to uh, expand the domestic uh, market. And uh, when, uh, if you have more people with uh, more income, then they can um, afford uh, to consume. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. uh, that's a uh, important way to expand the domestic market. China mm -hmm. has been talking about expand the domestic market, uh, encourage domestic consumption, with the backdrop of the ever complicated international circumstance in which China is in right now. Right. How much really uh, will the country function in terms of consumption uh, when the circumstances could get ever more challenging uh, from outside? I think the internal market and the uh, external markets are, are, are uh, closely related. Uh, emphasizing the development of the uh, domestic market doesn't mean that uh, uh, external uh, economic relations become less important. And even if uh, we want to, uh, say, um, expand the domestic domestic uh, uh, consumption market, uh, that can still uh, be very consistent with um, higher level of opening. And uh, also uh, mm -hmm. in uh, this day and age, uh, 
technology de develops uh, so fast, it's unimaginable for uh, any country uh, to be completely self-sufficient in all its uh, technology mm. needs. So um, the world um, will become more intertwined um, despite of all these uh, uh, frictions, all these uh, problems. You've been doing research for a long time about how to encourage small and medium-sized companies, but now with the pandemic and probably further dampening effect of, uh, uh, on the economy of that, uh, private companies uh, with, uh, with more vulnerabilities uh, might have a more challenging future. I, I think there are still a lot of opportunities. Uh, let me go back to consumption again, j just to talk about the role of private companies. Mm. As people uh, uh, become richer, uh, as their purchasing power increases, the demand for consumption changes. Uh, for example, the uh, people uh, demand higher quality of products. Then an interesting phenomenon is that uh, um, a lot of domestic brands are uh, getting uh, enthusiastic uh, support from the consumers. And a lot of these uh, domestic consumption de uh, brands uh, are created by uh, small and medium sized private companies. So uh, as uh, consumers uh, demands um, better uh, products that suits local demands better, um, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for private companies. So this is uh, one area. The other area is that uh, as people uh, uh, become richer, their demand for services also uh, increases. And uh, these uh, can come from different areas. Uh, for example, uh, health, for example, uh, our culture, uh, tourism, et cetera. And, uh, and yeah. to better uh, fill, uh, fulfill the needs, of uh, uh, these uh, service demand, um, again, uh, private companies uh, will have to play a bigger role uh, because uh, private companies are uh, very sensitive to uh, market demand. Uh, they, uh, they, they are better at uh, um, creating products that fulfill uh, consumption demands. But Professor Bai, some have been talking about the trend as a result of the uh, pandemic. Companies, uh, you know, on the verge of bankrupt is not rare. So there might be a, a trend that private companies will be uh, bought by uh, more government-owned companies, or government might come mm -hmm. into the private companies around the world uh, and 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 provide a certain support by being a shareholder. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Professor Bai, what do you make of that possibility in China? How is China going to be different, similar with the others? I think that's uh, uh, inevitable when uh, there are uh, uh, there is a structural transformation. That that's inevitable in a uh, in an economy that innovates. Um, so um, I, this is uh, one uh, what, one point I would like to make. The other uh, is that uh, yes, yeah. um, the uh, our financial system does not do a uh, very good job at providing uh, capital to private companies, and uh, so when they get into debt trouble, um, uh, the financial system uh, does not do a good enough job at, at uh, helping. Uh, the restructuring mm -hmm. of the debt as to, to, to get people uh, uh, over the short-term liquidity uh, problem when they have good long-term prospects. So uh, in these cases, uh, sometimes uh, state-owned companies will come uh, and uh, work together with the private owned company to uh, deal with the short-term liquidity issues. I think in, in the future, uh, we're still uh, need to uh, to work hard uh, to develop the financial market so that uh, when 
uh, companies with good long-term prospects uh, that face short-term mm. liquidity issues can be saved. All right. Well, as always, thank you so much, Professor Bai, for talking to us. Sure. Thank you.